guys. <laughs> Real casual. Hey guys, so I wanted to make a video about how I make my comics. Um, I guess I consider myself an autobio comic artist, um, but I feel like, yeah, it, it kind of changes all the time. Um, and my process also you know, isn't the same every single time, but I think this video will show like the very general sense of how I go about things. So in the beginning of the video, I'm going to kind of go through like the actual process of, you know, like showing you how I sketch and like do the line work and the color and bring it into Photoshop and finish it off. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be answering a few questions that have more to do with um, like my thought process and how I come up with ideas and stuff. Just to let you know, I am definitely not trained in any of this. Um, I didn't go to school for illustration or any kind of making comics sort of a thing. So this is all either like self-taught or studying like graphic novels or, you know, looking at what people are doing on the internet. So uh, yeah, this definitely isn't the only way. This is just the way I happen to make comics. Coming up with an idea, um, Again, it's not the same every time, but generally it kind of starts with like uh, a feeling or a mood I want to convey. A lot of times I'll be just like lying in bed super anxious and I'll write down my thoughts in like the notes app on my phone and then I'll turn that into a comic. Um, and that's usually how I go about with my autobio comics. Uh, sometimes I just kind of want to make up like a little situation or scene like a vignette, if you will. I see that as like a jumping off point for a bigger story. Um, but yeah, generally taking notes really is helpful, um, especially if I feel like I am out of ideas or I can't think of something off of the top of my head. I'll just go into, into my phone, look through, and then usually there's something there that I can work with. If I'm if I'm drawing a more like emotional comic, I'll focus on like drawing more of a metaphor rather than like the actual situation. Um, just because I think that makes it a little more interesting. It's a little more broad so people can you know interpret it how they want, which I'm very into. If it's a if it's a funny comic, I'll usually rely more on like physical humor and it is more realistic to how the situation originally played out. Um, and it usually, like, it'll have, like, a close-up of my face or, like, theatrical, like, physical comedy somehow drawn into there. So, yeah, those are the two main kind of comics I, I'd say that I make. Alright, let's move on to how I do my sketches and my thumbnails. Um, I would say nine times out of ten, I just do all my sketching right in pro procreate but um, this time I didn't um, and I'll show you what that looks like usually um, at this point I'll rewrite the the notes that I have in my phone um, and that way I can edit the words but I don't really do too much editing to the words in general um, because I feel like the original words are like the raw emotions and that usually is like what conveys the emotion the best um, but then, yeah, I do a quick sketch uh, just to get the general composition. Um, but then bringing it into Procreate, uh, I tend to spend a little bit more time making sure the composition and um, like the speech bubbles, everything's exactly where I want it for the, the final drawing. Because um, that makes it a lot easier to just go in with the line work and just get it done. Um, I think that this sketch took me maybe like a half hour to 45 minutes to do. And that's just because I was really like rearranging everything, um, making sure I was happy with how it was all laid out. I generally will sketch on a lot of layers and then merge them all together in the end, uh, just because it gives me a lot of time um, or a lot of wiggle room to mess up and then go back in and fix a specific section. But um, I've already drawn this sketch and it's looking how I want it. So I'm going to lower the opacity to around like 25%. And then I always make my sketch layer um, below the line work layer. In Procreate, I always make my file size bigger than um, the 
like what I know the final drawing is going to be, if that makes sense. So I usually will draw on like an eight by eight inch, um, 300 DPI canvas. Um, that way, if I ever want to make it into a print, it's all set to go. Um, so I'm going to start drawing the line work, but I'll talk more about uh, my general thought process when it comes to the panels. And I like to try to take all of the, the panels on the page into consideration. Even though they're separate parts, I like to think of them as like one whole composition so it all looks good together. And again, I spent a lot of time on the sketch layer, so drawing the final line work shouldn't take me too long, which is ideal. And not really worrying about like every single line being perfectly straight because in the end, I don't think many people will notice and you know, most people will just like look at the comic for a few seconds um, or will focus on the words. So it's not going to matter so much if it looks a little bit wonky. So I'm going to take off the sketch layer underneath just to see how that's looking. Um, and I'm going to add in the text in Photoshop just because um, I don't really like Procreate's text tool too much. Um, and I do use a font that uh, is my own handwriting. I'll talk more about that later on, but it doesn't work as well in Procreate. Okay, so let's take a look. Cool. Um, I think one thing I'm going to add it are clouds in the background of the second panel. Just because it's looking a little, uh, it just I feel like there's something that there needs to be something that fills the space a bit more. And we're going to kind of make them wispy. Okay, uh, let's move on to color. Uh, this is definitely my favorite part. Um, I do work with a limited color palette. As you can see here, this is what I've been using for a few months now. Um, and it really saves me a lot of time on deciding what colors to use. Uh, it, this whole thing takes me long enough. Um, and I think it really makes all of my work look cohesive when it's next to each other, especially like in Instagram. It always looks better when you're using the same color palette. Just so you know, the way that I work is that every color gets its own layer in Procreate. I'll, sh I'll show you how that works. So I think I want this whole scene to have like a twilight feel to it. So I'm going to use this kind of coral pink. And I'm using the color drop because again, it just works so much faster than coloring in by hand. And the brush I'm using is called Roughest Ink No Alias. Um, and that is from Kyle's Ink Box. Uh, but I just altered it a little bit in the brush settings to kind of suit my style a little bit more. A brush that I use when I want to draw with a little more texture is the Joe Thin Detail Tip Opacity from Joe Lillington's um, brush set, and I will link those below. But yeah, let's just keep going. So I'm going to make a separate layer for the bottom panel. There you go. And I think I'm gonna use this kind of pale green for the metal parts of the billboard. 
So one thing that's one thing that's really important and what makes color drop so easy is that for the line work I've hit reference and that literally just references um, all the lines that you've drawn. So when you drop in the color on a separate panel, it acts as if you're just coloring within those lines. Really speeds things up. Okay, and then I'm gonna make another layer using the same color for the bottom panel. This part's easy. Okay, so then what I like to do, and this is pretty much where my layer organization stops, um, is I will divide the different panels into groups. So I'm gonna rename them. So this is the top panel. And then this is the bottom panel. And yeah, I don't bother naming the actual layers, but especially because in Procreate, you can kind of see these little previews. So it just saves time and I'm lazy. So that's how it goes. And for the people in the bottom panel, I think I'm gonna stick with that same dark blue to make them look like they're in silhouette. Just going in and filling in any blank spots. For the text bubbles, I think, even though they look good um, in white, I think I'm gonna change them to this kind of like cream yellow sort of color, just because when I finally do put the text in on the billboard, I think I wanna make that white um, so it stands out more. Um, but I'm gonna do that in Photoshop because I don't really like Procreate's text tool that much. So this is looking pretty good. I like. The color combos i think i'm gonna do a couple extra things just to make it a little more interesting i'm gonna add a gradient to the bottom panel and i do that by making a new layer above the sky color doing a clipping mask and i think i'm gonna make it like a little darker coral so then what i do is i drag this down let's say to about there going to go to Gaussian Blur, blend that out a little bit. Yeah, I think I like that. Um, I think the last thing I'm going to do for color, I'm going to add some shading, but I generally, I like to keep the colors pretty flat, so it's not going to be too extensive. I'm just going to get like a little bit of a darker green gray, and then just drag and drop in. Cool, yeah, and there's my color. Um, I think I'm generally pretty happy with that. Um, so now I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop and add the text. Let's move it on over to Photoshop. Okay, so there are two main things that I do in Photoshop. One is I put the text in, and then two is I like to either do a little bit of color adjusting or um, or I add some noise in just to give it a little bit of texture. Uh, so you could see when I bring it into Photoshop, all of my my panels and groups are still here, uh, which is great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start typing in the text. As far as the meaning behind this comic, um, it had to do with me thinking about how suddenly I can't remember a lot of the, the names of the people I went to college with who I was close friends with, um, or at the very least I can't remember their last names, and I was surprised because I, I never thought that would happen. Um, I do have a bad memory, but I was still a little bit caught off guard, so I kind of imagined this scene where two people were talking to each other and having this discussion, but the billboard will say, I can't remember your name. So it's up to interpretation whether 
what the billboard says directly um, applies to the people who are talking, but I just, I thought it would be interesting to make it a little bit more ambiguous. But that's the starting point for how I got to where this comic is now. To finish it off, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a noise layer. And that just kind of gives it a little bit of texture because it's very digital drawing. Um, so it gives it a little bit of life. So I like to add like a medium gray and a good tip is kind of look for it to be around 50%. Go to filter, add noise, rasterize a layer. And now you like to do around 15% monochromatic. Bring that to soft light and then opacity I'm gonna bring down to like somewhere around 50%. So if I zoom in and then take it off and on, you can see that it just adds a little bit of texture to it. So yeah, I think that's the final comic. I'm gonna put it over here so you can see it somewhere here. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it's Definitely the, the line work is more on the simple side, but sometimes I think that, you know, you don't have to go with a crazy complicated drawing for it to like convey what you need it to convey. Um, but yeah, that is my drawing process. Let's move on to the, let's move on to the questions and the answers. Okay, so I asked on Instagram whether you guys had any questions about my comic making process. Um, so I'm going to do my best to answer them. Uh, which software do I use? Procreate. I think I mentioned it a few times and you saw previously, but amazing. Can't recommend it en enough. I, I have an iPad Pro from like 2017, so it's a few models old. Um, and I love it. it. It works great for me. What's your inspiration? behind your comics. So a lot of it um, has to do with just like general thinking and thoughts that I have. Um, most of the time I'm like lying in bed and filled with anxiety and feel like I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And so I write it down in my phone and try to get it out. Um, my former therapist thought that was a pretty healthy way of uh, like writing out my feelings. It's a sense of, it's a form of journaling essentially. So, hey, there you go, free therapy, kinda. It's helpful. Um, but yeah, in very general sense, that's the inspiration behind everything. About the autobio comics, how, how do you decide which are okay to share and which to keep for yourself? Um, so I pretty much share everything. Um, I'm very much into, you know, like if this could potentially help others or be relatable or make somebody feel that they're like not the only person going through something, then I think that's really cool. Especially because I know like when you feel alone in a situation, that's, that's really very hard mentally and physically. So um, I'm pretty much okay with just kind of putting everything out there. I do have a few more like private, like very much like journaly sketchbook comics or just drawings and I, I share those on my Patreon so it is like behind a little bit of a wall and it's not completely public but otherwise I pretty much share everything. How do you decide on the formatting? The general rule of thumb is that like bigger panels convey like a feeling of like or, or they slow down time a little bit or it's more of like an existential like big sky, little person in a field kind of feeling, if that makes sense. Um, and then like smaller little panels make everything go faster. Um, but a tip that I use when I'm stuck is that I'll just grab a graphic novel and open to a random page and how they have panels laid out. I'll literally just copy the, the format of the panels. I'm not copying what's in the panels at all, but literally just like, okay, if there's like a big box on top, two little boxes below, I'll be like, okay, that's what I'm going with. Um, and then I'll try to match the feeling of what I'm trying to draw to the, 
the size of the panels. So sometimes that works. Most of the time, actually, I think it works for me, but it's just a lot of trial and error and for figuring out what works best for you. Words or images first? How much work goes into the actual text? Um, I don't know what comes first. I guess usually the words come first, unless it depends. That's a hard question. Yeah, I think most of the time the words come first. I think that, yeah, I'll usually feel the feelings, write it down, and then like the next day, try to draw it. Unless like I took a photo or I see something out there in the world that I feel like I wanna try to draw and then I'm like, oh, this could be a good scene for a comic. But that's, I think that's a little bit more rare. As far as editing the text, I don't do too much editing. My grammar is probably terrible in all of the comics I've posted, but I'm not a, a word gal. I don't, I don't spend too long thinking about that. And I, and I think that you know whatever, whatever words come out first are usually the rawest, and I think that's a good thing sometimes. Um, where did you study, and how long have you been drawing? Um, so I studied at Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University in New Jersey. Um, I actually studied photography and a little bit of filmmaking. Um, so I didn't st study any illustration or drawing, um, except for like fundamental drawing. They did have a couple of those classes. But I think, I think comics and photography and film are very much related because of like the narrative aspect of things. And I was very much into uh, taking photos that showed a narrative. So I kind of directly applied that way of thinking to my comics. And yeah, as far as like composition and stuff, it's very, they're very similar. And then I've been drawing for forever. Yeah, for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to draw. So I just didn't happen to study it at college, which was mostly because my school uh, didn't offer an illustration degree. So, and I went to a state school because I couldn't afford any fancy New York City schools, but it turned out okay. I really enjoyed college. Um, how do you keep your comics minimal? Um, I always want to do a million panels. Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a, more so, <sighs> I think it's less trying to keep things minimal and more like a time constraint and being lazy. Uh, and just kind of wanting to convey like a certain feeling in the shortest amount of time. Um, especially with like keeping up with Instagram and just social media in general. It's just like you, you have to like keep pushing out content. It's just a, ma a matter of uh, kind of staying true to what I want to draw and doing it in the fastest way possible. Most people kind of ask the same thing. So those, if I missed your question, I'm sorry. Um, feel free to comment below and I'm, I will definitely get to you and answer in the best way that I know how. Um, I'm very open to like sharing everything I know um, because it's hard figuring things out sometimes and I've definitely learned from uh, other illustrators and comic artists answering questions and so you know ask away. I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, please leave a comment below if you have any other questions or if I missed something. Um, and it would be really, really, really helpful if you liked this video, give it a little thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I really enjoy making these videos. Um, and I hope you liked watching it, but yeah, that would be super helpful. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and I hope this kind of gives a little bit more insight to my whole drawing process. Um, so I will see you guys later. Cheers, squeaking. Huh, okay, thank you, bye.